Hi, it's Fraser Malcolm here for Golf FM, and today we're going to be talking about the Echo Golf Street and the Footjoy Superlight XP. Hi, hi, hi. So, I'll start with the Footjoy Superlight XP. Now, this is a a really really good shoe. I, I wear it all day long in the shop. I wear it to play golf. I wear it to teach. Um, I tend to suffer from quite hot feet and this being a man-made material I wondered whether my feet would get quite hot in it but they don't. It breathes really nicely. They're extremely light, um, waterproof and just very very comfortable. Um, they offer really good grip. It's the same sort of sole that used to be on the Pro SL, the original Pro SL. So it grips really well and it, it lasts really well as well. So it will last, you know, this full length of the shoe. So the shoe will just look an absolute state by the time the, the sole's worn out. And to be honest, you shouldn't be wearing them by then because, it, you know, you'll look like a jumbo sail on legs. So you need to be um, aware that shoes don't last forever. Um, but you'll get a good few years out of these. Um, and the great thing is, is there's no need to do anything in terms of maintenance. They are just wipe clean. You know, I've been wearing these for about a year or so. Um, and they, they do start to wear a little bit at the front there. But other than that, they look pretty manageable after after you. You just can give them a quick brush with either some just sort of fairy liquid and a wee a golf scrubbing brush do the soles get them kind of white again the side bits and uh, and just a little sort of quick brush across the top or a wipe and you've got all the mud off them so they're no hassle at all they're really good um, they come in black white and gray um, the white's got a sort of blue sole on it uh, it's quite a nice color scheme as well um, I've got for everyday use um, the gray one and the black one and it kind of does me for all sorts of outfits. See this gray one is really quite good for going with loads of stuff. You know, gray I find in shoes is, is a really good color because not only does it not get too dirty um, easily, it actually is quite neutral and it goes with anything. That's if you're fussy about what you look like when you go on the golf course. The black, yeah, and it goes with loads, loads as well, but obviously looks better with blacks and greys and things like that, and white. Um, but it's, I, I couldn't be happy with this shoe, to be honest. And, and I sell lots of it because it's a good price as well. So it's, it's about 99 quid. And it's got that sort of modern look without being too flashy for most people. You know, it's, it's got that little bit of flash of color but it's fairly straightforward, um, nothing to really dislike about it. And the fact that it's very, very comfortable and lightweight, it's, it's really good all round. And you, you know, the support side of it, you know, there's different debates about that in golf, you know, whether you need lots of support for during the swing, there's golf shoes that offer that, that are much more expensive and have got all sorts of technology thrown at them. But then you look at what people are using on tour and there's a massive array of what everybody uses. I mean, Justin Rose for years was walking about in a basically a pair of Adidas Sambas, for, for want of a better word. I think, I don't know what they were actually called, but they're just a basic trainer with maybe a little bit of more of a, a harder wearing, grippier sole than you might get on a normal trainer. And he did all right wearing those. You know, it's 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 one of these things that I, I don't think necessarily that you do need all the technology that some of them put into shoes. I think you need to feel secure. Um, and while I use this sort of sole unit for general play, if I'm if I was really serious about tournaments and things like that, I probably would go with a spiked sole, a soft spike. Depending on where I was playing, depending on if it was slightly wet or it was a hilly course or something, I would just want to feel that there was no way it was ever even going to slip. So even though it might show in you know exhaustive testing that this is just as grippy as a as a spike. 
there's just something in the back of my head that you know I've been playing that long that you've grown up with spikes and there's something in there that thinks well yeah that must offer a bit more a bit more grip for tournaments but generally when I play with these I never ever notice anything happening any grip slipping or anything so they are perfectly good so the other one that we were going to kind of put up against was the Echo and the Echo Golf Street's been around for a while. It was Fred Couples that kind of first started wearing it at the Masters and everybody thought, oh, I didn't realise you were allowed to wear such a casual looking shoe and to play golf. It just looks like a trainer. And it basically was a kind of fashion trainer with a little bit of a grippier sole. The, this sole unit and that sole unit are both good because I, they don't clog up. The, the way you'd have to go into some pretty sort of sticky kind of mud before this would start to to clog but I just find just with the, the way your foot moves and it kind of clears itself most of the time um, and the only time this ever becomes an issue is when the shoe's really been worn a long long time um, and you keep walking about on concrete if you continually walk about on concrete with any of these um, you will wear them down quite quickly and the temptation is there for you to do that because basically you think you're getting in the car to go and play golf. You can actually just wear these to drive and get out there and you're in the car park, you're on the clubhouse surrounds and it's all concrete and there might be paths out in the course as well. And then you come home and you think, oh, I'll stop at the shops to get some milk on the way home. And you're in the shop with them and you're walking about the street. You will wear them down probably quicker than you think if you do that. If you stick with these just as golf shoes and you're most, mostly on grass 90% of the time, they last the length of the shoe, if you know what I mean. So again, like I said with that one, the shoe will look in absolute state before this has worn out. So it's not really an issue. And the grip, as I say, is really good. I've been worn these for years, this, this sole unit, and it's, it is really very, very grippy. In terms of the Echo, Let's just see what they're saying again. They've got a little bit more chat about what's going on here. Hydramax uh, leather treatment, which I think is pretty much like um, the dry joys and the foot joy, where they treat the leather in such a way when they make it that it is waterproof and for the life of the shoe. And so there is no need for a membrane at that point. Uh, obviously, let's breathability be slightly better within the shoe because when you put a membrane and you're putting another layer and yes they do let water vapor out and not let water molecules in but there's still a you know a secondary layer there which could potentially trap heat so they don't have that they've got just straight leather and it's a it's a really nice quality leather you can actually see that it really is and it's got that sort of grain in it and then this sort of padding around the sides here uh, what else are they saying? Um, fluid form, sole unit, unique EDTS hybrids. It's all just quite technical stuff. And again, I, I used to be into all that, but basically you just want to know whether, you know, this is a nice, comfortable shoe to play golf in. And you don't need to know all the technological background. It's just mumbo jumbo really in the end. Um, the this, the collar here is really nice and soft. The leather, as I say, is really soft to start with, and the more you wear it, the softer it feels. I was actually really quite surprised when I put these on. I haven't actually physically got a pair of these yet, but I've had ones in the past. And uh, I put them on, and there's just something again, and I've said this before about Echo, it's just a feeling of high quality when you put it on. Um, and, and it, that's all I can describe it as. It just feels like they're really well built. The tongue section is joined to the side of the shoe. So although this looks like it's got a gap in there and the water could go in there and straight through your sock, but it's, it's actually enclosed. So it's folded in and you don't, so there isn't a straight gap. It actually is. This, the water would all stay on the top here. So yeah, it just, it just feels really, really solid and soft and solid i don't know how you can get those two things together to be honest but they are and it feels just really high quality um and actually the looks of it are really sort of growing on me uh, i wasn't totally sure about the lacing system when i first saw it but it actually looks really good on i think and i like i quite like that 
just a straight white color scheme as well. I think it'd be a great, you know, holiday shoe to, to take and wear, play with shorts. Not that I like playing with shorts, but um, I would I would wear those with, with shorts. And uh, they do it in the brown. I think there's other colors as well, but the only two I've got I do is uh, there's a black one as well. Um, the brown is a bit of a workhorse of a shoe. You know, it's not going to show up dirt. Um, it probably goes best with stone and khaki colored trousers and things like that. I'll say again, you can wear it with shorts. And it's, 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 it's not, I wouldn't probably go for the brown, but because I don't wear a lot of stone khaki stuff. But if you do, and you've got other colors that you wear, and browns, and I don't know what else goes with it, to be honest, but you get away with most colors really it would look fine with a pair of black trousers probably um but yeah it's it's uh, again the same shoe so it's, it's really nice and uh it's to his own when it comes to colors when it, um but uh, they're both they're both really really nice shoes and they're both round about the same price it's 109 um the the echo so i suppose it's a little bit more um but then you're getting a leather shoe and you're getting, as I say, Echo's kind of build quality. I should say about waterproofness that you need to be careful with, with waterproofness and getting too hung up on it. Most shoes, 99% of shoes now say waterproof, one year warranty. What you need to still understand is, and people said it before, but there's a big hole in the top. You know, this is not enclosed all the way halfway up your leg, like some sort of wader that you would wear when you're fishing. So to ask it to completely keep water out any shoe, you're asking too much of it. Because if you go in wet grass and wet rough and the, and the grass is all coming over your shoe and hitting you in the sock and there's water starting to get in there, it's gonna seep eventually if you do that on a really rainy, torrentially rainy day you're going to feel like your whole sock's wet and you're going to think this is leaking because front of your foot's wet, but it's only because it's it's transgressed right through the sock and right through into the front of your foot. So, you know, don't be too quick to say that, that shoes are, are leaking. Um, try them again. Um, generally, quite often, you'll find if there is a problem with a waterproof shoe, it'll be that there's one shoe leaking is quite often because there might be a slight fault with with one of the shoes very rare that both shoes are letting in tons of water that is always a sign that actually you've just worn it on a really really wet day and there was no way it was ever going to get uh, withstand the, the the weather what i think the best shoe out of these two is um sorry about that um i would go it's difficult. You know, I'd, I'd quite happily wear both of them. Um, in terms of a, a full-on golf shoe and the things that I wear to play golf, I'd probably go for this one in day-to-day -day use in the UK. How light it is. I like how easy it is to, to, to look after. With the Echo, I would need to watch what I was doing with that. You'd have to maybe put some leathers kind of lotion into that to make, keep it nice and soft. Um, although you don't have to do that. It kind of is pretty hardy, really. Um, but that would probably be my holiday shoe. You know, I would think if I was playing a few rounds of golf and I maybe needed something, I thought I don't really have a shoe that I like wearing with shorts or whatever, that would be the one I would go for, that white one. Um, and as I say, when I put it on today, just to hit a few shots in here, it felt really good and I actually really quite like the look of it once I put it on. Sometimes you have to do that with shoes. You actually have to put them on and, and try them and, and see what it looks like in your foot and walk around it and see it in the mirror because you don't always know what it's going to look like um, on. And the other thing is obviously the sizing. Um, uh, you need to try them on in shops. It's as simple as that because unless you've got good experience of a fairly recent pair of shoes in that brand, then you can go and order them. But otherwise, you need to be careful because even they even vary between models 
um, in within manufacturers, not just from manufacturer to manufacturer. Different models can have different size scales, even though they probably say that they are, they haven't. In actual fact, they do. Okay, so I was just going to show you quickly on this. This is Futjoy's own measuring system, all fancy, and uh, supposed to tell you exactly what shoe size you should have. So I'll just put this on here, put my foot here, right heel in there, and uh, just have a look at that. So that is UK men's on the, the, the black side there, on the right hand side. And I'm coming in at, well, you would think to be safe there that I'd need a nine. And even then, you know, is it squished, going to be squished up? My heel's right at the back. You know, so that's telling me 43, nine, you know, no smaller than that. Definitely not eight, because look, my foot's right over it, right? But why then do I take an eight in Superlight XP? It's very, very strange. You definitely need to try shoes on these days. You know, if you're buying on the internet, well, you can take a guess, but you'd be ready to turn, you know, ship them back if they're not right. Because it's anyone's guess. If this is their measuring system and I'm supposed to take a nine and I take an eight, then very, very strange. Probably a draw when it comes to it, but I'd probably go for this in normal use and that when I'm going on holiday. And I hope that gives you some good information on these shoes. If you're thinking about buying them, let me know if you've got any questions, put it in the comments and be sure to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.